Hello chess friends and welcome to Yazarov's chess channel and welcome to a special game that I wanted to show you today. It's Magnus Carlsen aka Dr. Nichterstein playing on leeches against another top rated player on the uh, on this very nice site. It's Father Gascoigne. His rating was around 2875 when I watched the game and this uh, guy Father Gascoigne is probably a video game character. I'm not so much into these video games I have to admit it basically playing video games is for me a waste of time but uh, everyone has his fun i'm not going to play video games basically chess is my video game i'm playing video uh, only chess so uh, uh, this game was incredible because uh, magnus carlson played this bullet game and uh, basically i told you that i'm not going to cover any bullet blitz or i don't know fast time format games but in this game magnus carlson played no inaccuracies no mistakes or no blunders in this fast time format and i've analyzed the game with this uh, stockfish uh, um, engine on leeches and here uh, i can show you no inaccuracies mistakes or blunders by magnus carson in this time format it's really incredible uh, basically the game was straightforward and magnus played a very very complex middle game i think it wasn't about i think opening preparations because uh sometimes we can play such a game with no inaccuracies mistakes and blunders when we have a deep preparation then maybe our opponent f falls into our opening trap here it so was still i think a complex middle game in which magnus carlson played simply healthy moves and i think this is also an instructive chess game because uh, you see how magnus simply applies the basic rules of chess straight positional forward uh, beautiful chess game and crush this opponent as i said with a perfect perfect bullet game so let's check out the game father gascoin this video game character played the move f4 so um, i'm not sure who is behind this uh, behind this character but okay his rating is still perfectly fine as i said 2875 on leeches magnus carlson on the other hand you see uh, 3179 at that point and i watched also after that so uh, many games uh, between magnus carlson and andrew tang the famous uh, penguin and uh, they played really some nasty nasty tactical bullet games i've watched many many games as i said i really enjoyed um, um my evening yesterday by watching only some chess so f4 as said we have knight to f6 uh, knight to f3 uh, we have g6 magnus calls in sort of a uh, king's indian setup against this uh, birds opening and here uh, after g3 we have bishop to g7 still common theory bishop to g2 castling so now uh, after castling magnus plays the move d5 and after d3 we have sort of a reversed leningrad setup um i had my troubles as white why uh, so basically i played as white these types of setups if you could just imagine this reverse setup um this leningrad setup is really annoying because what we want to do is somehow after the move c5 like magnus carlson played uh we want to force our opponent to push the pawn on d4 here and when that happens then this likes square bishop will be very very dangerous so in the game c3 the idea is finally to uh, play something like knight to d2 and then e e4 so one of the also uh, strategical ideas is to create sort of a, a pawn breakthrough uh, really a pawn storm here in the center and magnus played the natural move c6 i just want you to pay good attention how magnus plays really this natural healthy chess move so in the game king to h1 was played and the uh, one of the ideas for white can be here maybe to jump with the knight on e5 because uh black cannot take uh, this knight on e5 this could be uh, a positional problem because after f takes e5 you could go maybe knight to g4 but now d4 closes the center and white continues the game with this space advantage on the fifth rank so that's why king to h1 the idea behind this move is uh, to play in some occasions bishop to e3 and then hide with our bishop on g1 uh, so so far good opening line by father gascoin uh, and now b6 played by magnus carlson not uh, not being scared at all in this types of positions simply healthy developing move with the preparation to compete with this bishop on g2 by playing uh, bishop to b7 and there is this line if you for instance try immediately d4 it is really a tricky line that's what i meant about this leningrad setup i've played many times this reversed line of of this setup um here uh, after the move d4 uh, the idea of blacks is again to occupy our opponent's side of the board with the move d4 but there is this 
potential e4 move and uh, what you do now if you leave it like this then white will have again a central pawn storm with the potential f5 e5 moves on the other hand uh, if for instance black takes uh, d takes e3 it's the best move i think for black to proceed here it's simply taking Ampasan because uh, first of all we can aim against this uh, d3 weakness then bishop takes e3 is a possibility and now after b6 uh, because you have to fix your pawn here on c5 now the game gets really complicated that's why i decided to show you this line now knight to e5 very tricky creating this dangerous pin and now knight takes e5 is sort of a must move here by black after bishop uh, takes a we have knight to g4 so this will be really a complicated game after something like i don't know uh, retreating with the bishop we can still take maybe the spawn here on on d3 white will continue the game with um, would up the exchange but uh, by losing some pawns and a very important knight in the center so these are the complex ideas of the sliding guard setups uh, if you play it as black if you play it as white it's, it doesn't matter still these tactical po possibilities are possible for both sides so in the game magnus played this move as i said b6 he didn't want to push the pawn immediately on d4 uh, he kept the position a little bit complex here a uh, knight to a3 was played and here magnus simply developed so simply healthy chess as i always like to say knight to c2 which is white's preparation uh, to play the uh, uh, maybe here the d4 move preparing these ideas to fix the position in the center and magnus played now finally this d4 move so uh, not allowing his opponent uh, to uh, finally push this pawn on e4 now ampasan taking is good because after potential knight to e5 you saw this potential uh pinning idea then you have the possibility to cover with queen to c7 so you don't have to go into this tactical battle so now after d4 magnus gets his space advantage and now here i think um uh, father gascoin makes the first mistake uh, he plays the move c4 so basically you have played this whole setup in order to make this e4 move so if now white takes uh, pardon me black takes on e3 then you have bishop take to e3 and after something like knight to g4 maybe attacking the bishop here bishop to g1 is a good position idea because you have placed your king on h1 in the first place in order to make this move in order to make this bishop to g1 idea so now maybe um uh, white uh, has some possibilities to maybe kick kick away the knight but still uh, there is this problem if you for instance try bishop to a6 it seems like a good move also by by black uh, in order to attack the d3 then knight to g5 is a uh, tactical counter-attack because we're aiming simply with our bishop here against this uh, c6 uh, c6 knight so this will be still a complex game in the game as i said um, here the first mistake i think by um father gascoin it's the move c4 closing the position on the queen side uh it is good of course you can create some flank attacks with a6 b4 moves but still um it's a little bit too late because now magnus played simply rook to e8 trying to track the position on the e file and get use of this main main weakness in white's position is this weak square on e3 so still we have possibilities to play knight to g4 knight to e3 really really uh, create sort of an outpost at night and get our space advantage even on the third rank so now we have already occupied the fourth rank in chess we want to make progress uh, moving up ranks now it's time to occupy the third rank so in the game rook to b1 was played and here magnus again shows his great positional understanding he played the move queen to d7 simply healthy chess as i always like to say now the he has finished his development the rooks are connected all of the pieces are out we have a space advantage perfectly fine position most of us would try maybe something like instead of this queen to d7 move would try maybe to block the queen side with some a5 move but ma not magnus carlson he knew that after the move b4 basically it's a good move for black because now after knight to b4 knight takes b4 c takes b4 he invited this rook to come into the game but now at least he has accomplished after this move knight takes b4 that now this bishop is perfectly fine this bishop is aiming so <coughs> here in the game knight to g4 played by carlson finally uh, trying to occupy this e3 weakness and now uh, here um, you see white has to retreat this rook is a little bit of an object of uh, uh, black's attack it's really endangered here on, on 
on uh, b4 so rook to b1 uh, if you try for instance h3 here then i think again it's not such a good idea because we have this very very annoying move knight to h6 here and then the idea is to play knight to f5 attacking the g3 weakness and still have the possibility to occupy the e3 weakness so there are many weaknesses now in white's position here a g4 would be a possibility but now f5 uh, cracking the position uh, g takes f5 doesn't bring you so much because the knight comes again very active into the game with this uh, four possibilities uh, occupying weak squares possibilities you, you would be forced probably to play something like knight to e5 but now simply bishop takes g2 king takes g2 and now queen to e6 we have even the possibility to take out the knight uh, still maybe with the possibilities to play something like knight to f7 challenging the knight and this space of advantage that uh, magnus carlson has created is still something that white has always to worry about and that's why i think again this would be a favorable continuation for black so here rook to b1 was played so not this h3 idea in the game magnus finally pushed the pawn on e5 now when we have the pieces on the best squares when we have a huge activity with the pieces it's time to break the center so e5 perfectly fine we have f takes e5 knight takes e5 bishop to f4 uh, and now again knight to g4 we are not allowing uh, this trade of the knights because we want as i said the main target is now our e3 weakness in the game rook to b5 was played rook to uh, e7 perfectly fine idea because we are doubling rooks on the e-file uh, queen to d2 and now rook to e8 this is a new target so we have now two targets in white's position uh, knight to g1 was played and now bishop takes g2 king takes g2 and now h6 very cool move because uh, magnus realized that this bishop is a little bit loose here uh, it could be trapped with some potential g5 moves if you for instance try h3 here in order to kick away uh, the knight then queen to c6 first is the possibility if you try uh, for instance rook to f3 then knight to f6 is a good move because there are still some tactical threats uh, about this um, e2 pawn if you for instance takes b bishop takes h6 we can simply take bishop takes h6 queen takes h6 but now rook takes e2 you cannot cover with the rook as you have as you have been pinned here by the queen so you would lose the rook then after that if you take for instance um knight takes e2 rook takes e2 and now it's game over we can take out simply the knight so uh, the rook on f3 so in the game after the move h6 uh, so h3 wasn't played in the game uh, rook to d5 was played but now magnus simply queen plays the accurate move queen to c6 again creating this very dangerous pin uh, rook to f3 magnus uh, kicked away the bishop uh, with the move on g5 and here probably um well, his magnus opponent try, uh, thought that he has solved all of the positional problems but now still knight takes e3 we have prepared everything for this jump of the knight knight to e3 wins the game immediately here king to f2 was played in the game and now knight takes d5 in this position uh magnus carlson's opponent resigned because there is maybe the possibility if you try bishop takes e7 that's uh, the problem the best way here to um, the easiest way to win the game is simply to take out the bishop with the knight and continue the game uh, with one piece up of course it would be a completely winning end game so but you could also try again knight to e3 which is even better because if uh, for instance white retreats with the bishop on a3 then we have the cool move g4 so now the rook has to retreat now we are aiming uh, we're attacking the rook if rook to f4 then you get even checkmated with queen to g2 you have only one square king to e1 and now queen takes g1 you can only cover with the rook but now rook takes f1 and it would be game over so as said the great great attacking game by magnus carlson uh, aka dr nichterstein as said here no mistakes inaccuracies or blunders it's unbelievable that this is an instructive chess game although it was a bullet game so magnus is really something else when i watch some other players we have always like ding Luren is in good shape he plays very good but then after that he's not playing good so we have also caruana is in top shape then he's not so we have many uh, newcomers many great players but no one has this consistency like um, magnus carlson he plays really great all the time 
and that's why he's the world champion and uh, really one of the best chess players in history uh, i really enjoyed this game because it helped also me uh, to a little bit analyze this leningrad setup so i hope you don't mind Be it, although it was a bullet game but i think it was really really a great and instructive chess game okay uh, i hope you enjoyed this game uh, meanwhile you can watch my other commented chess games with some more magnus carlson game caruana games ding Liren games and from some other current tournaments that are going on uh, and you can also watch my best chess games of all time if you want to see the best chess games that have been ever played in chess history see you soon with some more videos and uh, chess is the best of course